I have an Arduino board here that runs on 5 volt logic. I also have a temperature sensor module that runs on 3.3 volt logic. If you're new to electronics, you may have come across this situation and you weren't really sure what to do. My name is Zach and I'm the Bite Size Engineer. In this video, I'm going to talk about what to do when your project needs more than one voltage level. This situation is really common in electronics. Some devices run off of 5 volts, while others will run off of 3.3 volts or even 1.8 volts. When you go online to read about what to do, you find all sorts of information about voltage regulators and voltage dividers, and also logic level shifters. There's a lot of information out there, so hopefully this video will help clear some of that up. If I were to connect the 5 volt logic pins of this Arduino board to the 3.3 volt logic pins of this module, it would probably damage those pins, or even worse, it would damage the whole component. So as electronics hobbyists, we need to figure out how to safely connect these two components. It's not just a problem feeding the 5 volts into the 3.3 volt part, it can be a problem going in the other direction as well. Sometimes 3.3 volts isn't enough to trigger a logic high in some 5 volt devices. As people learn electronics, they'll run into something called a voltage divider. It's a simple circuit that uses two resistors to drop the voltage down. Let me show you what I'm talking about on the whiteboard. A voltage divider circuit is really simple, it's just two resistors. I've got a 5 volt supply that runs through a 1K resistor and then through a 2K resistor. If I take my multimeter and I measure across the 2K resistor, I'll get a voltage level of 3.3 volts. You can test this out by building this circuit on a breadboard. If you want to learn more about voltage dividers, you can go to DigiKey's resource page and there's a really awesome voltage divider calculator on there. Let's say instead of a constant 5 volt signal here, we had a changing 5 volt signal, like a square wave from a clock signal, for example. You could use a voltage divider like this to convert a 5 volt clock signal to a 3.3 volt clock signal. And I'll show you what that looks like on my oscilloscope. Here I have a 50 hertz square wave coming from the Arduino board, and it's being put through that voltage divider. On the oscilloscope, the yellow trace is the 5 volt input, and the light blue trace is the 3.3 volt output. So if you had some sort of data signal or clock signal that was 5 volt, you could easily lower it down to 3.3 volts using a voltage divider like this. At this point, you're probably thinking to yourself, great, if I need 3.3 volts, all I need to do is build a simple voltage divider and I can power all of my 3.3 volt components off of the voltage divider. But this is not a good idea and I'll tell you why. You might be able to get away with this if your load is small, but any loads that you attach to the 3.3 volt output are going to need to dissipate their power through that one resistor in the voltage divider. But anything more than just a small amount of current is going to dissipate a lot of heat through that resistor and it could destroy the resistors. So that means that this is a really inefficient way to supply power to a component. So voltage dividers are a great way to reduce the logic level of a signal, but they are not ideal for powering a component. For powering a 3.3 volt component off of a 5 volt supply, you're going to want to use some sort of voltage regulator. In this case, we're lucky because the Arduino board already has a 3.3 volt regulator, so we don't have to add our own. If you were using another board or in some other situation where you didn't have one, you would have to supply your own 3.3 volt regulator like this one. I cover linear regulators as well as switch mode power supplies in another video here on the DigiKey channel, so go check that out if you want to learn more about voltage regulators. At this point, I think I've covered all of the pieces to safely connect that 5 volt Arduino board with that 3.3 volt temperature sensor module. So in the example from the beginning of the video, I had my 5 volt Arduino board and a 3.3 volt temperature sensor module. I could use a voltage regulator to supply the 3.3 volts to the module, and then I could use a voltage divider to drop the 5 volt logic signals down to 3.3 volts, and that would allow me to safely talk to that module. But what happens if I need the module to talk to the Arduino board? I need to use something called a logic level shifter. This is a breakout board for a little chip that will do bi-directional logic level shifting. That means that it will go from 5 volts to 3.3 volts and the other way around. If you had a project that had a whole bunch of 3.3 volt components that needed to talk to a 5 volt microcontroller, this would be the perfect breakout board because there are 8 channels on here. That means that you can connect 8 signals that would talk bi-directionally back and forth. I'm going to quickly solder some headers into this breakout board so that I can plug it into the breadboard and show you how it works.
To demonstrate logic level shifting, I've got this temperature sensor hooked up through the level shifter and then to the Arduino. Like I said at the beginning, the Arduino board runs on 5 volt logic only. This temperature sensor module actually accepts voltages between 3 and 5 volts, but for demonstration purposes, I'm running it at 3 volts so that I can show you how the logic level shifter works. The sensor uses the SPI protocol, which is Serial Peripheral Interface, so it has four data lines, chip select, data in, data out, and clock. So three of those four data signals are actually coming from the microcontroller into the sensor, and so those will be shifted down to 3.3 volts. Now the data out signal coming from the module is going to go in the other direction, so it needs to be shifted up to 5 volts so that the microcontroller can read it. This long wire coming out of the module is the thermal couple. It can be put in really hot places to measure temperature. These are commonly found on 3D printers because they're a great way to measure really high temperatures. I've got an example sketch running on the Arduino board that just continuously prints out the temperature. So I'm just gonna take a heat gun and I'm gonna heat up the tip of the thermocouple and hopefully we'll see the results on the serial monitor. This is a really good demonstration because the SPI protocol has data running in both directions. So there'll be shifting in both directions. So I'm gonna turn on the heat gun and slowly start heating this up. And hopefully you can see on the temperature readings that the temperature is slowly going up. Yeah, it's really starting to increase. All right, and I'll turn it off. It's probably too hot to touch. Is that a bad idea? <laughs> yeah, it is really hot. The cool thing about the Arduino IDE is that it has a serial plotter so we can visually watch this temperature change. So it kind of draws a graph and as the temperature rises, the line goes up and down. So I'll take away the heat and we can watch it start cooling down. When you have components in your project that use multiple voltages, it can be a little bit confusing for people beginning in electronics. So hopefully this video and this demonstration kind of cleared up this topic a little bit for you. DigiKey has a whole bunch of good resources for some of the things I talked about in this video, so I'll link those in the description. You should also go check out the other video I made where I talk more about voltage regulators and switch mode power supplies. My name is Zach and I'm the Bite Size Engineer and I look forward to seeing you next time.